Anansi begs the sky god to let all the stories told about the god instead be told about Anansi. The sky god agrees, but only if Anansi brings him a swarm of bees, a python, and a leopard. Anansi agrees and goes home to think. For the first task, Anansi puts a drop of honey in an empty gourd and carries it around until she encounters a swarm of bees. After telling the bees that his friend doesn't believe that a swarm of bees can fit inside the gourd, the bees prove it to him by flying inside and Anansi shuts them in and takes them to the sky god. Next, Anansi cuts himself a long stick and tells a python that his friend believes that pythons and cobras are about this equal in length. Indignant, the python stretches out to his full length and lets Anansi tie him to the stick to stop him from squirming. With the python captured, Anansi carries him to the sky god. Now on the final task, Anansi digs a hole and waits for a leopard to crawl into it. When a leopard at last falls for the trap, Anansi try ties his feet to a stick to help him out of the hole. However, Instead of letting the leopard free, Anansi takes him to the sky god, who finally grants him his wish. Once upon a time, there were three brothers married to three beautiful wives who lived in now what's northern Albania. The three brothers worked very hard day and night to build a castle to protect their town. But every time they finished the work, the castle walls would always fall down, and they didn't know why. One day, I met an old guy, and he said, There's only one way to fix the castle walls. A sacrifice? Yes, indeed, a sacrifice. And by my own opinion, the next wife that comes and brings you lunch will be your sacrifice. And make sure to tell your little scrammy brothers to not tell their wives or else they'll be running. The two other brothers, once at home, explained the situation to their wives while the younger brother said nothing to his wife. The day after, the three brothers waited anxiously for lunchtime. The wife the wives of the two older brothers didn't come for lunch, but Rafa's, the youngest brother's wife, came with a box full of delicacies. You're gonna be have you're gonna have to be sacrificed. Sacrificed? Indeed. There is only one way that I'll sacrifice myself. Okay, which way? You take care of my son. Okay. <laughs> I'll miss you. <laughs> and the castle never collapsed again, collapsed again.
This is the story of Fen Miko. Once there was an old man who was very wise, and he had an, and he had an apprentice called Fen Miko. One day, the man sent Fen Miko to catch a fish for him. This fish was a salmon of knowledge. Fen Miko found and caught the fish. And then after, he cooked it and blistered his tongue. Because his tongue was blistered, he sucked on it. When the old man came home, came home, Finn Mikol handed him the fish to eat. But the old man realized that Finn had gained the power of the salmon. This is the story. This is the story of the ghost of Inondale. A girl called Marie Rue was driving in an apple grove with her boyfriend, and they crashed and died. Now she is a ghost. People nowadays say when they are driving on the orchard, they see her on the side of the road, and she just, and she and she disappears. When they stop and they keep driving and she's in the back seat, and when they look behind, she's gone. The end. Okay. Once upon a time, there lived two goddesses named Obatale and Oya. is better known as Oya Lassin, which means mother of nine. The decorally told Obatala to be the husband of Yama. Obatala is be be believed to be the creator of the human body. Oto Oya is the wife of strength and god of thunder, and she is said to be the goddess of wind, thunderbolt, and fire. She is said to have powers that can transform a gentle breeze into a raging hurricane. This is the story of Madame Koi Koi. Madame Koi Koi is mainly known, is mainly known for hunting school premises with activities ranging from opening school door, singing, whistling. Attacking people in toilets or the bathroom or slapping students. Our presence is always accompanied by our footsteps. She may also be invisible, save for our ills. In some tales, she often disturbs students at night, demanding our ill, which is said to be missing. Jessoro was a legendary Yoruba queen who lived in the 12th century. She has her own statue in Ife or Shun State. I am Moremi. I am married to Oremi, and I am a Yoruba queen. Ile Ife was at war with the fearsome people known as the forest people. Lots of their native people were being enslaved. The people were furious but didn't have the means to defend themselves. 
To save her people, she made a pledge to the river spirits as a mirror. She surrendered herself to the forest people. And because she was so beautiful, and thanks to the help of the river spirits, the king made her his wife. I pressured them into telling me all their secrets and escaped back to Ife to tell my people about their secrets. The Yoruba people subsequently defeated them in battle and she remarried her first husband. I helped you, so it's your time to sacrifice your son. Please, I'll sacrifice anything else. Don't make sacrifice me- Sacrifice him now. Okay. Oh, oh. To help console her, the people promised to be at her internal children, a promise kept till this day. Her legacy is long-lasting as she has her own festival, musical, and fourth largest statue in Africa. Welcome to the Orange Show. Today we have a special guest here, the god of lightning and thunder, Shango. Everyone give him a round of applause. <laughs> so, Shango, today I'll have some questions for you. What is your super strength, your superhuman super strength? Uh, I have a level 100 class su uh, super strength. I uh, use in battle. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, what is your superhuman speed? I'm as fast as, uh, as lightning. No one can catch me when I'm in battle. Uh, what is your superhuman agility? I have great balance and, and I'm very agile and I fight in battle. Right. What is the master axe wielder? Uh, it's my double-faced axe that I use to, uh, as a weapon when I'm fighting. Cool. Um, Oshe Shango possesses a double-headed war axe called Oshe. Um, so what other special abilities do you have? Uh, I can control the weather, uh, I can fly, and I have immense speed. And lightning. And lightning. So cool. that's the end. Sheikh Jamu, he is the Albanian national hero, the highest that an Albanian can have. He is a symbol of bravery, loyalty, wisdom, and unfiction of the Albanian nation. He was an army general. Arbin unco unconquered by the Atun army for 25 years was protect protecting the freedom of his mother and he fought 30 battles and lost the only one due to reason by his closest people. Sarsun Bergen died in the last battle which was the only one he lost. The end. Many years ago, the hippopotamus, whose name was Itzantum, was one of the biggest kings on the land. He was only second to the elephant. The hippo had seven large fat wives, of whom he was very fond of. Now and then he used to give big feasts to the people, but a curious thing was that, although everyone knew the hippo, no one, except his wives, knew his name. At one of the feasts, just as the people were about to sit down, the hippo said, you have come to feed at my table, but none of you know my name. If you cannot tell me my name, you shall all go away without your dinner. As they could not guess his name, they all had to go away and leave all the good food and tombo behind. But then they left, the tortoise stood up and asked the hippopotamus what he would really like, what he would really do if the tortoise told him his name at the next feast. 
So the hippo replied that he would be ashamed of himself and his whole family would have to leave the land and for future dwell in the water. Now it was a custom for the hippo and his seven wives to go down every morning to, to wash in the river and have a drink. Of this custom, the tortoise was aware. The tortoise was, the, tor the hippo used to drink, walk first and the seven wives followed. One day when they all had gone down to the river to bathe, the tortoise dug a small hole in the middle of the path and waited. When the hippo and his, sorry, seven wives returned, two of the wives were some distance behind. So the tortoise came out of where he had been hiding and half buried himself in the hole he had dug, leaving the greater part of his shell exposed. When the hippo's two wives came along, the first one knocked her foot against the tortoise shell and immediately called out for her husband. Oh, it's Santa, my husband, I have hurt my foot. At this, the tortoise was very glad and went home joyful as he had found out the hippo's name. When the next feast when the next feast was given by the hippo, he made the same condition about his name. And the tortoise got up and said, you promise you will not kill me if I tell you your name. And the hippo promised. The tortoise shouted as loud as he could, your name is it Santum. At which a cheer went up from all the people. And then they sat down to their dinner. When the next feast, sorry, when the next feast was over, the hippo with his seven wives, in accordance with the promise, went down to the river, and they always have lived in the water till the, from that day. And although they come up to shore to uh, to feed at night, you never find a hippo on <clears throat> on the land in the daytime. Hello, my name is Danica and I attended this meeting. I liked it. It was very nice. I learned a lot of things about different cultures. They were very cool. I talked about Cú Cullen. It is a famous Irish legend. I liked it as well. Thank you. So I've been attending this workshop where we have been learning about various myths and legends from different cultures. Uh, it's been a very enjoyable experience and I've learned about lots of different people and their beliefs. Sometimes the myths and legends can overlap and have some similarities between all the cultures. Um, I shared a story with the group. It was about um, a legendary heroine from my culture. Her name was Morami. Um, she fought in a battle and she used espionage to help her country win. But she paid a great price for it and had to sacrifice her only son. Through this project, I've learned a whole lot about everything and I've come to respect different beliefs and cultures a whole lot more. So today I'll tell you about what I learned yesterday. Yesterday I learned about myths and legends from a bunch of different cultures. I learned about a school teacher who lost her son and came back to haunt the people who took the, her son from her. I learned about a ghost from, I learned about a ghost who died in an apple orchard and haunted people who drove through the apple orchard. I learned about a hippopotamus who through great feasts and every so often he would ask them to tell him their na his name and if they couldn't he would kick them out and a very clever tortoise um, made one of his wives stub 
uh, their toe and call for their husband. And he banished the hippo to the river and everyone got to eat free. Um, I learned about a castle that was structurally not too good, so they had to add improvements. And uh, they actually, there was three people building it and whoever's wife um, brought them lunch next was gonna die and her bones were gonna be used as a building foundation for the castle. Uh, hello, my name is Victoria and I'm going to be telling you about the things I've learned in this art and drama class. I've learned about how diverse stories, legends and myths could be and I've learned about cultures and places and all different countries and it was just super fun. And my favorite activity was the Rock, Paper, Scissors Championship, which I won and it was really fun. And drawing my legend, which was um, Morime, it was really fun. Just drawing her and feeling how nice it is to just learn different things and learn new things every day. And my friends, which are there as well, I made new friends and I got to know people while I was here as well as learning about different cultures and how diverse places could be. And my one was about uh, Morime and she is a Yoba legend. She saved her people and after she saved her people she had to sacrifice her son to the river spirits. And the people in Nigeria were like, Morime it's okay. All the children in Nigeria from now on has promised to be your children and they were really grateful for Marie for helping them and saving her people and in, in exchange sacrificing her only son.